Hi everyone and welcome to another ha episode of Hashtag Ask Jimmy. We're up to episode number 51. We got past our 50 milestone and we are just talking off camera mm -hmm. how we've been going for nearly more than a year now. More so than a year since we started this. That's it. So I want to give a couple of special shout outs to Aussie Az and who actually were the boys with the Cobb Loaf Delivery. That, they own that Facebook page. So we're streaming into the Aussie Az page which is all, all about all the things Australian. And Very they, nice. They do you. some nice gym stuff as well all the time which is great. They do some love their memes and they've got 460,000 I think followers on their page. Which is a heap. <laughs> These guys are good. They're absolutely good. And we also have Jim's Memeing. So you know the Jim's Memeing page is going 30,000 followers as well. Yeah. So Jim's, and they had the old comp and they always do the memes and stuff like that. And so Jim's Memeing, we're going straight into their page tonight as well, which is around 30,000. So we're looking forward for a lot of questions and interaction on the live feed. It's great. We've got a lot of questions and comments in tonight. So if you are watching for the first time, yes, this is Jim. This is the man here. So that logo, this one here. That is Jim, so he's sitting right yeah, there, so make, take no, advantage no of it. No beard, no hat, but it's me. That's it, so take advantage of it tonight, guys, especially on the other pages, to ask Jim a question, anything you want. Um, even if it's about the beard, hat, we're happy to answer it right again. Well, I could put the hat on, I suppose. Yeah, we can, I so just to prove it is you. Yeah. Yeah, there it is. Right. Yeah, well, I, false beard, probably a bit too much. You <laughs> should have bought the false beard. So there it is, and we're going to give that away from someone who come from Instagram. So people are saying they're from Instagram, that's great. So awesome there, guys, we're going to do that there. We have books as well, so if you are from one of those other pages, we have books. And obviously Jim's book as well, which he actually self-wrote. There was never ghostwriting, all that sort of stuff. So we got that there. So let's get straight into it, guys. So if you are watching from the other page, leave a question or a comment, and Jim will answer it or acknowledge it straight away. So let's get bang right into it, okay? So we've got one here. So we've got a few people tuning in here, which is great. So from last week, we had a guy called David who was from the Jim's bookkeeping division. Mm -hmm. Now, he left a comment and said, Jim, I think I've just bought into, he goes, Jim, I've booked into, uh, bought into Jim's bookkeeping. What do you think about the future of bookkeeping in the division itself? Well, it's one of the better ones. Um, we have we have quite a bit of work. It's got a great internal market because you've got nearly four thousand franchisees who need yes. help, and, and they they like to use gyms for most things if they can. So yeah, it's a good one. It's got a great divisional toy too. Lloyd's really good, yeah. really strong leadership. Yeah. So Funny thing about it, we actually had we were had about six in Townsville at one stage. It shows you can how many you could have. I don't know if we had the right kind of franchisors and marketing across the country. There could be thousands. That's it. So it's a really good one, the bookkeeping division, and thanks for that one there. So we've got a lot of people saying that from Instagram now, which is great. Someone's gone here, Clint, uh, Chris Witt's gone, hey, Jim, it's great to see you're keeping the Australian economy going single-handedly. <laughs> <laughs> what do you reckon about that? Well, not the much as we'd like to, because we haven't got enough franchisees. Yeah. 170-something thousand unserviced leads last year, which is painful. So let's talk about that real quickly. So we do have a younger audience from the other pages, especially on the memeing and the mm. Aussie Az pages. They're watching, they're probably younger, thinking, what do I do post maybe post-school or something like that. Maybe you want to talk a little bit about that to them. Yeah, well, this is the thing. Everybody these days wants to, um, they want to go to do something with computers or, or sit at a desk and stuff. And yet, the potential out there is, is extraordinary. You know, there, there's franchisees in gyms who are multi-millionaires just from being gardeners and cleaners and all kinds of things. So it's, it's, it's amazing people don't understand what's in front of them. I mean, one of the luckiest things of my whole life was that I failed to be an academic. Hmm. I spent 10 years getting myself a PhD, couldn't get a job, went out mowing lawns. What, what, a, what a great career move. And there you go. So if you are a young person watching on one of the Aussie Az or Jim's Meme or any of the pages especially, it's a great career option is going into business for yourself. And I've got that young Dan Cahill. It is too. As long as you don't mind yeah. getting your hands dirty. I, I'm very proud of it. I've got calluses on my hands. So You've got very calloused hands, don't you? A lot more callous than mine. I've got really yeah, soft ones off with your hands. Yeah. There we go. So a lot of people are tuning in now on the live feed, which is great and saying g'day. Someone says it's the legend himself. Yes, it is yeah. the legend there, Oliver. Um, well, I don't know, a legend is a sort of, sort of semi-mythical person who's dead a long time ago. I don't know that quite applies to me. But I think you're a mythical person, but you're not dead. There we go. So there's, we're taking half and half. Well, some people think I am. <laughs> that's, you that's, do know I'm why did Ruben not to exist. Well, we do, we do get the succession question sometimes. I, have, I even heard there, was a, there yeah. was a story, there was some textbook. I've never been able to find it. Somebody said there's a business textbook which opined that Jim was actually made up by some smart marketing company. Really? Yeah. I've heard it. Never, 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 never could track it down. Somebody said that. When you have a bit of bad asthma, though, we do get the question about the succession plan as well. It comes up from some concerned yeah. people. I'm good health. I'm going to be around for another 20 years bugging everybody, that's for sure. And there we go. So we've got Zach Vlostom saying, Jimbo, how are we going, mate? Jimmy's going very well. We've got Haydar saying hello from Cyprus. See you next week, which is oh, great. Oh, enjoy yourself in, in Cyprus. Lovely beachfront property. Absolutely. So we've got Sharon Connell tuning in. Dave McDonald said, done a 12-hour day today as Jim's and tennis franchisee, which is great. And Belinda's jumping on, and Belinda's a dog wash in Northern Queensland and Southern Shine, and uh, franchisor as well for dog wash. A lot of people saying g'day, which is awesome. Guys, how you can win stuff is leave a question. Very, very simple. Leave a question um, <laughs> leave a question or a comment, and we can give you something as well. So Paul Evans goes, Christ owns the universe, but Jim's having a crack at it. 
So they're probably referring to how many divisions <laughs> the, the divisions, Paul. So there's a lot of questions and comments coming through you guys. If you do uh, put them well, there. I think the universe is probably a little bit... The franchising universe. The yeah, franchising universe. We'll yeah. say that. Well, we are the biggest in Australia. We've got the most franchises of anybody in Australia. Mind you, of course, a, a gym's mowing franchise worth a little bit less than McDonald's, but still. It's now let's talk about the number. It used to be Australia Post, right? Wasn't it? it was a yeah. bit of conjecture between you De and Australia def Post. Definitely us now. Definitely us now. Definitely us now. What they, are we nearly? They've got, they got more post offices, but a lot of them aren't, aren't franchised or licensed. Yeah, right, okay. So we're the biggest. So we biggest number by numbers. numbers. Actually, yeah. not only in, the, in Australia, but in the Southern Hemisphere. Okay, wow, that's that's massive. Biggest, yeah. So there we go. All right, so now we've got Ben Lindemann. This is a question. This is a great one, Ben. This is awesome. It's a bit different. Hey, Jim, what's your favourite movie? Question mark. Oh, I love, I love Dances with Wolves, I guess. That's one of my favourites. Dances with Wolves? Yeah, really? I love that one. I just right. love the, I love the music. I love the... the Dances with Wolves. I, I, I don't know if we... I think we've asked this one before. I don't know if you said that one when I've asked you that before. Yeah. Dances with Wolves. I love it. I love it. I love the, I love the way they portray... It's completely unrealistic right the, the way they portray the lakota as being sort of ignorant of what i mean the lakota had been actually in contact with europeans for since the 17th century so that they weren't they were a lot less naive and also they were a pretty bloodthirsty bunch too they were actually at the time that this movie was set that they, they were actually expanding and driving out neighboring tribes and stuff and so <laughs> The reality was very different to what the film showed, but it's still a, it's still a really fun film. It's just very moving. I love the, love the landscaping too. I like the characters. And, and There you yeah. go. I never would have predicted that. That's a great question, Ben. That's what I like. That's what we've written down there. So, got Janine as well going super excited, busy getting on board, becoming a franchisee of Jim's Dogwash. So, new yes. franchisee prospect watching, which is great. I think it's Janine, so well done. Eric Jurgens goes, what question do I leave so I win a prize? Well, we don't know. Leave something <laughs> a bit more science history, a bit more off the beat, I reckon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If, it, if, come if, up it, if it's something other than business, I tend to, I tend to be more... more Positive. And there we go. Well, <laughs> leading to the next one from Chris Witt. Jim, how long have you been in the business sector? Well, it depends what you regard as that. I've been gardening in the gardening industry continuously since 1970. So that would be, um, what's the one? 49? Uh, oh, no, 1970. 1970, that would be 50 years. 50 years. I actually, when I, when I left um, school, I took a year off. And one of the things I did, apart from unsuccessful stints at selling encyclopedias and stuff, or trying to, <laughs> I, um, I started a little gardening business. I got three gardening customers. I charged a dollar fifty an hour. Not bad rates. And I kept a couple of those. And then as I went on, I just I started charging a bit more, like three bucks an hour. And then I got a lawnmower to to pay for a car. So that was about 1975. And then in in 1982, having completely flunked out of my um, academic career. I went full time. Well, there you go. So 50 years in business. I've written that down to make a social the post. Same the business. Now. The funny thing about it was that I kept on looking at all the, I kept on thinking, what's, what's, what's my real, even after I started the mowing business full time, yep. I kept on thinking, what's my real business going to be? This is just something to keep me going until that gets off the ground. And it took me quite a while to figure out, hey, this is not too bad. Uh, well done. That's a great question there, Chris. Didn't know that one. It's 50 years in business for Jim. So congratulations. Years, yeah. But I've been actually down. gardening since I was eight. Eight? Yeah, right. but not continuously. There was, a, there was a few years in high school I didn't do it. There we go. Now that's an awesome one. Awesome question. That was really good. And congratulations, Jim, for 50 years in business. So jump on, guys, if you are watching lots of people coming in, comments or questions for Jim. Okay, here's one for Mitchell Barber. Well, what's the least known, most fascinating Jim's franchise? Least known? Least known, most fascinating. Is there one that's most fascinating to you? Or well, that's something you're interested in as a service, or yeah, personal training is one I really have a heart in. I, I'm a huge believer in fitness. It's a PT. Yeah, that's right. Interesting. When you look at um, hunter gatherers, people like the Hazard of, of um, Southwest Africa, they they have very few of the degenerative diseases of old age. Yeah. People people get old and they have a lot of accidents and stuff. So they don't always live that long, but. Yep. Um, they don't get the arthritis, they don't get the heart attacks, they don't get the cancer. There's a lot of things that we consider part and parcel dementia of old age they don't get. And a lot of it's just keeping fit. So I, I'm a huge believer in, in fitness. So personal training is it's, it's, it's one I'd love to see take off. And there we go. We got our first franchisee signed, I think, yesterday. Yes. Absolutely yes. first franchisee, Alan. So Alan's in Melbourne North. And we're actually having somebody come to do personal training with our staff here. We are. Or pay for by Jim's group. That's great. I'm looking forward to that. Mm. It, we're going to get you out there as well doing some exercises with Alan. Some great videos. Yeah, okay. Get listen, right. How are you going to lift him some weights? <laughs> get you on the bicep curls. You can surely do it. You'll, you'll be fit with all the miles and all that sort of oh, stuff. Yeah, so. I'm, I'm strong enough. I'm, 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 
I'm right for him. So we're going to have Jim's gym, mobile gym, out here with Jim himself doing some gym exercises. Yeah, we're going, we're going gym. personal training. We're, we're, we're getting a health club built on site. Yes. So, so officially, staff, Jim's and, gym. And we're going to have the sign above it. Franchisees and, yeah. and uh, you can call it Jim's gym. We are. We're going to have the sign above Plus, it. Plus, we yeah. get Jim's Home Fresh delivers boxes of fresh fruit Absolutely. to my staff every Monday morning. So we want to be healthy in this in this place. There we go. So Paul Evans goes here. What's next, Jim's book? Well, we do have Jim's book. That's called Jim's book. Yeah. So if, if you leave a question or a comment, Paul, you can be get one of those as well. So we do have Jim's book. Now we keep going with some questions here. So this one from Ben. Were you into any sports when you were younger? Haven't had that one before. No, not really. I was spectacularly unsporty at school. The, um, I don't think I used to play squash a bit as a teenager. Squash is good. Very, very, very energetic and very thinking game. So a bit nerdy, I'm afraid. Be nerdy, so no I sports. I wasn't really a, a jock. But squash is your, <laughs> but squash is your sport. Completely hopeless with girls. Always having crushes and never getting absolutely anywhere. I was the worst pimply teenager you could imagine. But look at you now, Jim. Look at you now. Well, um, if, only they, if only they took that chance with you, Jim. I still don't think I'm any more attractive to women. My, my <laughs> wife likes me okay. That's, that's about all that really matters to me now. I don't, I don't think I'd come across as a sex symbol somehow. <laughs> I think some people would say you are a sex symbol, Jim. This is a bit of a sex symbol. Well, I, I, if, if there's all these beautiful young women throwing themselves, I haven't noticed it, actually. I haven't seen any right. sign of it. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> not yet, not yet. That's a great question, Ben. Keep leaving questions or comments. We're getting through a heap tonight. So Angela's got, Angeline's got another page here. What are Jim's thoughts on Tasmania in general? I don't know if that's in relation to Jim's or just the right. state, I don't know. Well, Have you been to Tassie? Yeah, yeah, many times. Yep. Tasmania is beautiful. I remember going to the, the Rift Valley and up and down the, the East Coast and Hobart and Sandy. I think it's beautiful. I love, love, love If I had a choice of where to live in Australia, just from the point of view of the leave, leave business aside, it would definitely be Tasmania. Yeah. I think yeah. it's just, just magnificent. And you know, houses are reasonably cheap, and there's lots of great land around, and and the climate is a bit cooler than here, which suits me very you well. You do like the I cold, don't you? Do not like the heat. Yeah, do must say because you're a bit cold blooded, Jim. You like the cold? No, I'm warm blooded actually. If you if, <laughs> if, if you're cold blooded, you'd like the heat because okay. you're, like if you're like yep. a lizard, you have to come out and lie on a rock That's to true. heat up. That's true. If you if you're warm blooded, you can be like a polar bear or yep. or, or a, or a, a, a penguin or, or a seal, and you can live in freezing conditions because you have internal source of heat. That's true. So if you like to bask, you're cold-blooded. I'm warm-blooded. Okay, there we go. Let's get our science straight. I stand corrected, and that's why I'm getting education every time. Like I always admire those Russians who go, go diving off the ice flies. I think that's yeah. fantastic. What they call, I think they call them polar bears. Oh, uh, yeah, that's true. They yeah, go and they, 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 they plunge in. And, uh, that, that sounds fun. A little bit much to me. Like cold showers in the winter I can handle. That's I don't know about jumping off ice floes. <laughs> That's very true. Just a reminder for everyone, if you are watching from the Aussie Az or Jim's Memming page, we welcome you. This is Jim himself, so make sure you leave a comment or question. We've got to keep going through a lot of ones here. All right, Zach's gone here. Zach Vlosblom, on a real note, what is your favourite place in the world? My farm. Your farm? <laughs> I okay. love, my, I love yep. my farm. So where is your farm for people who are watching? Oh, it's, it's, it's up on, it's up on uh, um, Yarra Valley, about half an hour from here. I, I love to go up there every week and just... Just dig and take weeds out. I was doing holly bushes last um, last week, which was great fun. Because just just digging things. I've got I've dug up this um, this corn patch from um, from scratch. Just dug it out of the ground and and, and put some aged manure on. And, and Mark, the guy who works with me, put a fence around it. Yeah. And then just went along, planted little little seeds. And now that the the um, they're about two meters high. Okay. We reckon we're getting at 4,000 years of corn out there. And because it's very organic and stuff, it's going to be, you know, a, um, no, actually, what did you say? Yeah, $4,000. $4,000 a crop. Wow. And I, and I did it all. That's fun. So the answer to that one, Zach, is farm. Which, which is why I've got calluses on my hand for doing that kind of thing. Ah, but it's you do have very, a big very one there. good exercise. You have a big one there. I recommend farm work. It's better than. Better than the gym because it, you're doing something constructive. Now, a lot of dairy farmers from back home are nice, big, strong lads, and I've never lifted a weight in their life. I think so too. That's right. Yeah. So we'll keep going. That's a great question, Zach. So Mitchell Barber, this is a different one. We'll ask it to Jim because we're going to put it all to him. So leave a comment or question. Fine, real question. Does tomato sauce belong in the fridge or pantry? Your answer will finish the debate. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like tomato sauce. You don't like tomato sauce, right? No. Okay. Most of you put it. They seem to go in the fridge in their house. But in your house is the fridge. All right. Yeah, it has to go in the fridge. I don't know, it's pretty arbitrary, isn't it? We probably, put it in the pantry, I don't want. So. Well, it'll probably last forever. I, 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 re I reckon if you dug up a, a tomb from the ancient from ancient Egypt, if there was tomato sauce, you'd still find it sitting there. You just 
squirt it in a snag and be all right. You know, I reckon that stuff lasts forever. It's got something that's preserved as a salt in it anyway. That's very true. But I always find people who put put tomato sauce and everything, it's a bit disgusting. It's real sugary, there's a lot of, yeah. Yeah, I know, particularly chips. I, I, don't, I like chips, I shouldn't, but you know. You Jim's very healthy though, Mitchell. For anyone watching, Jim is a very healthy man. He, does well, a lot of exercise that I, I have my weaknesses. Mm. Nutella is the, the worst one. Absolutely, Nutella is the shocking one. You cannot resist. I do like I do like pizza too. We had pizza last night. You do love your pizzas. I never. I keep not mentioning that one. Yeah. You do like that. You have a pizza night, don't you, every week? Not yeah. every week, but yeah, we have a lot of pizza. Yeah. So there we go. So we got Tyler Cartwright's going. Hey Jim, I did some sign spinning for Jim's cleaning in Melbourne back in 2018. So you know the old spy sign people they stand on the road and they flip signs to get people. Oh, really? I think. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's okay. pretty cool. Someone's okay. going to Jim's drone training. I think Jim's drone training could be part of Jim's photography. Drone training. Yeah, Jim's drone training. Yeah. Well, it's Jim's drones, I know. We do some... Jim's drones as part of Jim's photography. Yeah, we do. It's not taken off in a big way. Yeah. So Dave McDonald's going, do you have any artwork for Jim's Monopoly? Um, we Hopefully, we've just yes. finalised the board because we did have to ask all the division what they wanted for services That's and right. stuff. So we did just have that. Uh, JK, our wonderful producer, he's dealing with them. Got a uh, message back from him today because it's custom things. You obviously want a trailer for the houses and stuff like that. Yep. So that's we're going back and forth with that. So once we get that confirmed, David, um, we can start looking at some artwork. It's going to be hard. We're going to try some and... very artistic guys back here. We do. Yeah, it's going to be like, like Jake over there. Jake and, and Ben. And, and ben. It's yeah. going to be very competitive on that board, so on that on that cover. So we're going to make sure as many divisions are represented. I think it's going to be fun. I reckon it's, I reckon it's, going, to, it's going to wipe the board. Nobody's going to play traditional Monopoly ever again. Jim's Monopoly is so much better. Absolutely. That's my prediction. Of course, Absolutely. I'm pretty lousy at predicting anything. So. <laughs> Why not own the whole group? But we won't be too far away. And Janine's gone, Jim, you seem, uh, Jim seems so full of life and positivity. What's yeah. his secret? Great question. Life and positivity. Life and positivity. What's your secret? Oh, I have a wonderful life. I mean, I, I have just about everything you could want for happiness. I've got a wonderful wife I, I absolutely adore. I've got beautiful kids. I've got a job I love. I, I, I love my church. I, I've got a great relationship with God. Um, meaningful meaningful job yeah my research project I, my life is full of meaning and purpose and, and i'm fit and i'm healthy you can't do better than that and i think we did a podcast on this about how to start you have why you're so happy which is um mm. if you go that janine i don't know if you know we do a podcast called the jim's cast and it's on youtube as well very interested in the science of happiness people have very false ideas they think you're going to get happy by buying a, a, a better car or a bigger house in, in fact, as, as I've said before, the best thing you can do with money is actually is to give it away. That's known to produce more happiness than anything else. And you do regularly give money away part of your yeah, religion, right? We give, we, we give away far more money for our research than, than we actually live off, for sure. Yeah, there we go. So it's a great one there, Janine. It's a really nice comment as well. So Julie Baldrish in our call centre, one of our lovely operators over there. It's gone, oh, hi, Julie. I recognise you. <laughs> always send <laughs> emails, right? That's right. right. Yeah. When is the gym going to be built? So when's the date? Uh, hopefully by mid-year. Mid-year? Mid yeah. Um, Lee, my wife, is a builder, so she's, she's good at that kind of stuff. So Lee's going to sort it out, but we're going to definitely have it mid-year, hopefully. Yes. Quite be, could be quite busy, that one, so we might have to charge some membership. No, we can't do that. <laughs> we can't have anybody outside. It's only for staff, for franchisees and franchisors who are on site, and also for people who are guests at Foothills, not, not open to the public. There we go. So we've got Kane Thompson. Hey, Jim, grass is very brown here in NZ. Been going for six years. You have been an inspiration to many. Yeah, well, thank you for that. We, we have a problem. I don't know. You haven't got the rains yet. Yeah, in NZ, I think we've, it's pretty we've dry. Got, we've gone from drought and, and fire to, to floods in the course of only about a week. So um, maybe maybe you'll be followed that. You'll, you'll be going the same way. There we go. New so Zealand's beautiful too, actually. I tell you what, South Island of New Zealand. Have you been there? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I've been more than once. I, oh, really? I, I just love it, actually. Because, again, it's very lush and green and a bit cool, especially especially... South Island, about Christchurch and stuff. It's yep. beautiful. We actually went, we went, had a cruise with my family around um, New Zealand at Christmas before last. And Lee kept on, every time she went, she said, oh, we'd love to come and live here. She thought it was so beautiful. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. So let's keep going on here now. So we've got there someone saying Facebook, Jim's book. Yes, we can. We've done a photo of that before. Someone's going, can you spawn a, sponsor a V8 supercar team? <laughs> that look pretty good though. The green one with Jim's on it, like it would be synonymous with like Australian like V8 supercars with Jim's mowing or Jim's as a. Well, the, the funny thing about Jim's is I don't actually have any advertising money. I don't control it. My franchise always control the advertising, yeah. so I have very little say. In fact, we, we we find that online online works better anyway. Um, things like Facebook and and AdWords and so forth, and obviously having you know, good ranking pages and so forth is the best way to spend money. Sponsorship doesn't seem to produce the results these days. Yeah. So it's different. I used to be, I used to have a reputation as being a rabid um, 
a football supporter because we used to, uh, and and um, a Richmond supporter because because we we, we uh, supported them many many years ago. So everybody assumed that I was a football fanatic, but in fact I had nothing to do there. It was all the franchise who said we want to support Richmond. Yeah, it's all right, it's your money. That's it. So yeah, Jim's mowing was used to be the Richmond. I think I saw the Swinburne Centre now. It used to be Jim's mowing. It had it all around, and there's yeah. a big famous photo of all the trailers, which were photoshopped back in the day, I think, but at the Oval a few there. So that's right. Yes. They, they invited me to all the president's lunches and stuff, but I never actually went to anything, of course, because it's football. It's boring. So <laughs> I'm, I'm, not my apologies to not all the fan. football fans out there, but uh, I didn't even want to watch squash. I like to play it, but I. Mm. And here we go, Chris Witt's gone, Jim, I just found out that Jim's Monopoly is a real thing, and I've never bought anything it's faster in my life. Is. You, sir, are a business genius. Well, actually, it wasn't my idea. No, it's one of our guys in IT, and Jake and Jake's been making it happen with myself and another yeah, guy. Yeah, so, it was a suggestion coming from I think it's a good mm. one actually. I, mean, no, I reckon it'd be great. It's going to be cool, and it's actually a lot cheaper than the other custom ones. So most footy clubs do them, and they're like ninety bucks. I think they're out the hours at the moment sixty dollars. So sixty or seventy. Sixty dollars for pre-orders now. Oh, Once yeah. it goes live, it'll be up to seventy. Yeah, but sure. still significantly cheaper than the other custom ones there as well. So we got Where are we I think it's going to be fun. All the, all the chance is, is, is customer service and, and, um, and community chest is, is uh, business success. That's it. So we've got all, all, the, all the meetings change and stuff. You can own the whole group. Like but but they, wouldn't let us, they wouldn't let us go to breach. They had to, we had to go to jail, <laughs> but they won't let us change the corners. So for those watching, uh, breach notices are issued when you do something wrong uh, against your agreement. So that would have been making it really gymified. But so equivalent in this game, you won't get breached, you get sent to jail, which is a little bit more severe than we do in, in actual real life in gyms, but n not much. Not much, not much, not much often when you hear some of the... Breaches, breaches are pretty... People get very upset about complaints in gyms, that's for sure. That's very true. So welcome to everyone who's watching, especially on the Aussie Asset Gyms meeting page. Leave comments or questions. As you can see, we're getting through to everyone as we can. There's been some nice, nice different ones tonight, which are a bit unique. Dances with Walls, a gym's favourite movie. I would never have thought that. So let's go keep going on there. Well, one of them. There's, there's quite a few. Yeah, sure, there's a lot, I reckon. But that's that, that free enough guard at the start. So Zach's gone here. Are you a fan of fishing? If so, what is the biggest fish you have caught? That's the first one as well. <laughs> Zach's got a few rippers tonight. I'm liking your well, down, Zach. Well, I, I wouldn't say to. I, I, to me, it's a little bit, a bit slow. I like exercise. It's a bit more <laughs> vigorous than... Than fishing, the biggest. But we go to the trout farm sometimes. You do go to the trout farm. Yeah. Right here we go. Here's another new thing. So you go to the trout yeah, farm. I've been to trout farms just right. occasionally too. And yeah. probably the biggest fish I caught was about that big, which is a trout from a trout farm. So. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there's much skill in that though. But I, I did it for my kids actually, as much as anything, because I wanted to show them if you eat meat, then something dies, which, which is nothing wrong with it. You just got to recognise it. And, and mm. one of my daughters is now gone vegetarian, so. Oh, there we go. It must maybe had an impact. So a trout at the trout farm is the answer there. They Zach. were very upset. They said, Daddy killed the fish. Daddy <laughs> killed the fish. They were very upset. So that's a great one there. And Paul Evans goes, great idea of having a live vid. Thanks, Paul. I think it's great mm. to have Jim every week. He does this, which is awesome and much pleasure to him. Robert Owens going, I enjoyed the book about Jim. Was curious about his studies on society? Question mark. Yeah. Good question, Robert. Well, the, the, Robert, it's, my, it's my, my central passion in life, you might say, because I, I did this... This PhD in, in my 20s, um, I mean to be an academic, but I, I developed a totally different way of looking at society, which suggests that, first of all, we're in a lot more trouble than anybody thinks in terms of we're going through the same process of decline of the Roman Empire. But interestingly enough, it would be relatively simple to do a whole lot of different things like curing poverty, mental illness, all kinds of things, and, and reversing the decline of society. You look at almost any social ill, you could be changed using epigenetics and so forth. So what I've actually done with my business is, is I'm funding the research. And we've had some really, really interesting results which suggest that even you know this year, we, we may have some sort of a treatment that can actually help to cure certain forms of mental illness. Really? This year? It's possible, yeah. Wow. We've, we've, we're doing stuff on animals too at the moment, on, on rats. and, and Rats and humans are very similar in these kinds of areas. So, yeah, very hopeful. So, I'd say to Robert, go to the YouTube channel or to gyms.net mm -hmm. under Who is Jim. It has all the stuff about biohistory and we do podcasts and stuff like that. But that's a great question there, Robert. So, let's keep going here. Let's rip through these. This is great. There's a lot of comments and questions coming through. I'm working my way up, trying to be as fair as possible. James Munro, Clinton's guy on pineapple on pizza, yes or no? No. No, Yuck. I agree. I agree with that, that one. That is disgusting. That, that, is, that is a kid's pizza. That is really. <laughs> even my 10 year old's had better taste now. He has margarita these days. There we go. Dave McDonald's gone. We had an antennas conference in Queen in Queenstown in New Zealand. I tell you what, a really nice pizza. I like a Mediterranean pizza. Yeah. I, I like I like the pumpkin. I like the olives. The, 
not olives, I wouldn't no, go for olives, like but, but um, eggplant and, and those kinds of things. I reckon Mediterranean, really nice Mediterranean pizza is one of the best meals you can get. There we go. So he's got, Dave McDonald's gone, where did No he pineapple. No, no pineapple. All right, there you go. Great question. No pineapple on pizza. We had an antennas conference in Queensland. No, if I ever find anybody having pineapple on pizza, I'll tell you off. <laughs> not a thing to do. No adult should do such a thing. There we go. You might have to tell um, Foothills, no more pineapple on pizzas. I will. There we go. Done. Action from Nice Jim. Dave McDonald's gone. We had the end. We had our antenna conference in Queenstown a few years back. It was great. Mm. Queenstown, I've heard, is really beautiful. Kyle Marcus gone. Is cereal a soup? Why or why not? Question mark. Is cereal a soup? Why or why not? Is cereal a soup? So I know. I want to ask you some original ones. Well, you some original ones. Cereal in a soup. You like you put barley into a soup, but cereal is a solid. You can't make it into a soup. What about with the milk? So he's probably thinking if you add the milk to it, then it would become a soup. Well, you can put it in soup. You can put. Right. You've got to put a cereal into soup, but they're, they're, they're totally different. Interesting too. question. It's definitely thrown us there. One I've had that one before. <laughs> it will do. So we'll keep going on here. <coughs> so we've got a guy called Marx. He's gone. Hey, Jim. I bought a Jim's going to send it shirt. I love it. That's cool. It's most likely not for us, but we do love the Jim's memeing stuff. So good yeah, on you. We do. Let's keep going. Eric Jurgens is going. Hey, Jim, what are your thoughts on all the fires and now the floods and rain that has been falling? It's been suggested that there may be a direct link that after the fires that the rain promotes new growth and may be linked. Well, it often seems to happen. I must say, you get you get um, you get drought and fires, and you get this magnificent flood. We can't do anything by halves in this country, can we? But no, what, what does this say? I love a sunburned country, uh, land of open plains, of rugged mountain ranges, of droughts and flooding rains. I mean, it goes a long way back. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, go. it's good to see. Actually, I'd rather have a flood than a drought any day. And Eric watches every week with his fish and chips, so happy for you uh, to watch and leave that question, Eric. That's great. So we'll keep going there. Jerry, Jerry Cat's gone starting bins tomorrow. So you might be starting the gym's bin. Starting gyms. Bins. That's wow. awesome. Okay. Well, good luck, Jerry Cat. That's a good, that's a good, you can keep busy. A lot of good money. Bins, you make very, very good money. Absolutely. So Belinda Hadley's gone here. What are your thoughts in, on franchisees expanding their business and putting contractors on? Oh, question yeah. mark. Great. As big as possible. The, the, the thing about Jim's franchise is because the the base fee is fixed and it doesn't matter how many workers you have or how many bands you've got on the road how many traders you've got on the road you say the same base fee and all you do is pay for some extra leads so it's actually and, and so that means if you put a worker on you need more work you just simply open up the floodgates and usually just work around you just put some in so it's it's quite common in gyms in some regions most of the franchisees have multiple trailers on the road yeah so Splinter's dog wash franchise all so have you heard much of Dog Wash, the Dog Wash franchise, franchisees expanding much? Or some of them might have two trailers, I guess, or a couple of workers. I know some of them do, but yep. mostly that's the, the problem with, with that, of course, is the, the, the trailers themselves are so expensive. True. You know, talking about 25 grand for a trailer, they're beautiful trailers. They really are. They're the best. Mm. In fact, we're, we're the only manufacturer in Australia, the, our factory, that makes these things. It's pretty well driven everybody out of business. So they're great trailers, but it's a lot of money. Well, Jim Stogwash is number one for a reason now in a very short time, which is great. And thanks to people like Belinda tuning in and leaving questions, which is awesome. So make sure you leave a question or comment, guys. We're getting through a lot tonight, as you can see. So Tracy Rowland, this is a new one. <laughs> what mythical creature would improve the world most if it existed? Gee whiz, that's, that's an obscure one. That's a good one. What <laughs> mythical creature? What mythical creature would improve the world most if it existed? Oh, I know. What about a honest politician? <laughs> An no, I'm not that. I'm not that <laughs> cynical, really. But an honest politician. Well, if he's a myth mythical creature, it counts as one. <laughs> that reminds me of the uh, thing that said, "In, in this grave, there's a, there's a, the gravestone says, in this grave lies a um, an honest man, a statesman, and, and a member for wills." It's extremely <laughs> unusual to have three people buried in the same grave. <laughs> so. uh, that's a great question, Tracy. And if you're watching from the Jim's Meme or Aussie As page, guys, make sure to leave a question or comment. We're getting through a lot, as you can hear from Jim. I'm really not that cynical about politicians. I think they're probably under... under well, I don't know if they a, listen to a, your it's, stuff. It's, it's a tough yeah. job. If they listen to your stuff, though, Jim, they might see me otherwise if they go back to the podcast. Yeah, well. We'll, we'll keep going on here. Pierce James gone, Jim, I, see, I saw your advertisement for Jim's Mowing Monopoly. It will be Jim's Group Monopoly. Yes. And I was thinking about a buyable Jim's beard, similar to the one on the current logo. I think you buy them online already. There's a lot of beards, but maybe a beard and hat combo. So maybe if you had like a beard and a hat, you could buy together as a something. Especially, I think so. Yeah. I think actually what we ought to do is to make it part of the uniform. Make everybody <laughs> wear a Jim's hat and a Jim's beard, especially the women. That way we, we would have a, a constant, a common theme. Be brand consistency. Everybody would yeah. have to wear a beard and a hat when they're out there in the uniform. What do you think? It could go. We might be a bit of kickback on that one, but we can no, put it out to a vote. Or we can put it to a vote because we do the votes with franchisees, right? We could make it past the manual. Why not? 
You could Everybody do it. have a beard and a hat? I, I used to have a beard and a hat, so why shouldn't everybody else do that? <laughs> could go to a referendum. And maybe national staff. We can start with national staff maybe to do it. Yes, I think so. I there think the, the girls wouldn't mind. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll keep going here. So Janine's gone here. I might say we do have an unusual situation in gyms where we have to actually get changes to the manual passed by referendum. So we might have a bit of struggle with that one. But There we go. So we'll keep going on here. So Jim, uh, Janine's gone, Jim, what hobbies do you enjoy except for gardening? What hobbies do you enjoy except for gardening? What do you call a hobby? I like, I love, I love just spending time with my kids. My my ten year old's delight. We do. Aaron, yeah. We we play games like Chinese Chinese checkers. He's pretty good actually. He's almost as good as me. I mean, sometimes. <laughs> oh, you just yeah, when he starts beating you as the dad, then you got to. He's terrible yeah. at chess though. Ten, I expect to be a lot better than that. <laughs> but he's, he'll learn. Um, I like doing jigsaws with my kids too. I play a stupid computer game called um, Conquest. Right. Where you got to conquer the map and stuff. Uh, Just like your conquer franchising, I do this right now. Silly things, yeah. And I like having dates with my wife, that's fun too. So. Well, you got Valentine's Day coming up on uh, Friday. What do you got planned for that? Uh, nothing. You know, the day we <laughs> celebrate is the day we met, which was ah, April 20th. April 20th. So it'll be our 19 year anniversary coming up. We actually go back to the railway station we first met and we reenact our meeting, which is difficult because they've changed the station now. It's, it's Burswood near. Um, Near Chernside. Okay. Um, so April 20 is your Valentine's near, Day. Near Chester Shopping Centre. No, 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 that, that's our Valentine's that's Day. That's your Valentine's Day. April 20th, day we met. Great miracle day. Wonderful so, day. Changed my life. There we go. So we'll keep going. There's a lot, better. Of, lot of great questions and comments coming through now. Elizabeth Burgess going, looking good, Joel. I like the sports car idea for gyms. Yeah, well, probably won't happen unless mm. the franchisees want to do a sports car or something like that. Jerry Cat, have you been to different places around the world? Question mark. Have I been to different yeah. places? Um... Well, I suppose a few. Um, I hate travel, actually. I hate aeroplanes, so not as much as you'd think. I've been to England. Um, I've been to uh, Scotland. I've been to Thailand. I was asked to give a series of talks Good there. place, Thailand. Great place. <laughs> Awful plane flight. Like, I hate it. They wanted me to go to Italy, too. I said, no, it's too far. I'm hoping to go to Israel this year sometime. Trying to run a con uh, do a conference like a uh, involving biohistory type ideas. Gee, you'd have to come and come and film that over there. The boys might have to come over and do a whole session. I'm sure they'd all love to trip to <laughs> Israel. <laughs> My kids would love to go. I'm, I'm notoriously hard to move. I, 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 you know, a lot of ways I'd be happy never to never to move outside Victoria in my whole life. Probably Maroubark, reckon. No, 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 my farm. The farm, no, okay. My farm. That road is there. But so, but, I, but alien places like the city, city of Melbourne. I hate. I hate going there. That is true. I had to go for a meeting the other day. It was awful. Like, it just <laughs> horrible place. So there, there's a great answer. That's a great question there from Jerry. And good luck starting your business tomorrow. Zach's gone here. Jim, are you a fan of motorsport? If so, what cars do you watch? I, I would say no. no I'll pick that, that one. All right, let's move on here. I'm a, I'm a most unsporty person. I don't think I make a very good politician. You have to at least pretend to be interested in football or cricket. You got to. That's exactly right. You got to go to the game and pretend to have a beer and all that sort of stuff. My kids used to ask me which football team I back for when they were little, and I said Buganda, which which really is, doesn't. It's, it's the Buganda it's, gorillas, it's right? It's an ancient African kingdom. So so just to uh, put it off. <laughs> so let's keep going here. So Chris Wick is gone here. This is an interesting one, Jim. When you're gone eventually, and that will be a national tragedy when that happens. Well, it'd be personal tragedy. Personal tragedy. Saying a national tragedy. How would you like to be remembered? Well, I hope it's for my research. Research. That would be the way I'd want to be remembered more than anything. I, I would want my research to be successful. I would change the world in quite remarkable ways, and it could, if I'm right, and if I can prove it by developing treatments. I'd like to remember that for sure. And then Patterson's gone here. Patterson Action Man Daniel can I have a signed book. You can if you leave a question or a comment there, Patterson, and you can download it as well from Jim's.net. He's gone. It's a great Australian business, absolutely. Daniel, how do I grow a beard like young Jim? Also on a serious note, what's the process of starting off as a franchisee in fencing, for example? Is the tr is there training involved? Oh yes, yeah. It's, it's a good question. It's a great training course actually. Yeah. You, you the eight weeks on the road training plus three days at national office in generic training. They teach very well, actually. They do. You start off with no knowledge at all, and you learn how to build very, very good fences. We get very few complaints about anything from the fencing division. It's very, very thorough. And really, if you think about it, I mean, fencing is a fantastic business because there's so much work. It's like 60% on service, and it's good money, and it's good to you can put teams on the road because there's so much work in it. That they're big jobs, um, and, and we just never run out. So fencing is, is a fantastic business. And I think by comparison with, you know, you go and spend 
you know, what, four years of university getting some undergraduate degree, and at the end of it, well, you're, 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 you're a barista or something like that, <laughs> aren't you? I mean, honestly. Yeah. So right. you spent eight weeks, eight weeks, and you got yourself a fantastic trade with masses of work. It's, it's a brilliant business. Well, we had a guy, I'll tell you this, Patterson, we had a guy called Polizoi, he watched around eight of these in a row, and we kept harping on about fencing, and he started, and he had 60, I think 67 or 61 leads in his first two weeks, yeah. which you shouldn't take on too many leads. But that's how many in the first two weeks. You probably took too much, but it's common. That's right, but you can build a massive business really quickly and make we, some We actually money. have a system in gyms where you can, you can put a maximum number of leads per day, which sometimes you need to in the early days because you, you can get flooded in some divisions. Uh, that's a great question there. And we've got another one from Patterson. What are your hobbies outside of the business industry and what is something you would love to tick off your bucket list? Do you have a bucket list? Win the Nobel Prize. Win the Nobel Prize. There we go. That, is, that, is, that, is, that would be my ultimate aim in life. I mean, the Nobel Prize, okay. Yeah, for something, I don't even know why. That's actually. for the research though, isn't it? For my research. Well, for course. franchising, the contribution for franchising for peace in Australia, making it everyone harmonious, get good service, the five million services and jobs done at people's houses every year. <sighs> oh, look, I love what I do and I, and, I, and I find meaning in it, but it's not world shaking. There we go, that's a great one. Win a Nobel Prize though. Maybe if you research, you never know. Well, if that for, works. For my research, yeah, that would, that would be, because that would show that it's been successful, it's been, it's been accepted. Which of course it isn't right now. I've got people who are, who are. I've got quite a few followers out there. It's even it's even being taught at some universities. These ideas, but it's not it's not it's not orthodox um, in academia at the moment. Mm. But that would be that would be my ultimate aim. <laughs> so we we'll keep going here. Which is which is which is very modest, of course. That's very modest, man. That's not a, oh, you ambitious goals are good. Look, if if I if I'm wrong, I'm some sort of crank. But if I'm right, it would it would be revolutionary. Absolutely, it really would be, and it's an easy. It's an easy theory. It predicts all kinds of things that you can do, you know, all kinds of treatments and stuff, and what effect they would have and stuff. And it's not difficult to actually develop the whole thing. Well, you're giving it a fair crack, so yeah, giving it a good chance. So Belinda Hadley's going. I now have four trailers and about to put a contractor on. I four also trailers. run my own trailer as well, wow. so I'm so excited. So Belinda's up in dog wash up in Queensland. Four trailers. That's unreal for a dog wash franchisee. Yeah. I haven't heard of four trailers, Belinda. So it might be the most I reckon. Yes, that's really good. Well, some of them do actually. Well, there's a lot of work around. And Belinda's probably the most active Jim's Dog Wash franchise on Instagram as well. I reckon I see eight to ten pictures a day <laughs> of dogs, of jobs they've done. Very awesome. enterprising lady. No wonder she's Absolutely. got four trailers. Absolutely. So Julie Bulger's gone here. I'm not going to college with a beard and a hat. You might have to, Julie, if it gets changed in the manual or all staff have to do it. Well, Julie, Julie works in the call center. Yes, she does. We can yeah. maybe do it over there. Janine's gone, will Jim also wear the beard and the hat? Well, you can get him wearing the hat. Of course, everybody. Has Absolutely, we're getting to wear the wearing that, but the beard might be a bit of a struggle. So yeah, we'll right. have to get the fake one on this there. Bad, actually, my head's very big. So that fits you all right. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it's a good one. That one yeah. looks good. You, you can get them online as well, at Jim Shop. I think I'll wear this. It hides my, my rapidly um, receding forehead, <laughs> growing baldness. I reckon it's an improvement. <laughs> I mean, I had to, when I shaved my beard off, actually, after I had it, my, my kids were actually horrified, but. Um, it was funny, you know, when I grew a beard, there was this young bloke, and then when I shaved the beard off, this, this middle-aged guy comes out and sort of disappears from behind <laughs> the beard. So. There we go. So let's keep going here. Dave McDonald's gone, I, I already have a beard. My second most asked question is, do you have to, have to grow the beard? I say, <laughs> yes, most question is comment. Most common question is, Jim real? Absolutely, Jim is real. He's right here, yeah, so take advantage of this. We, we get, at training, we get our guys to... Um, to have their photos taken, well, those who want to get a get a get a selfie with me, so they can actually show the clients this gym really exists. Yeah, this is, this is him really <laughs> there we go. Yeah. That's an awesome one there, David. So thanks for that comment and question. It's awesome. Leave comments and questions in there, guys. If you're from James Meming and Jim's uh, Aussie as as well, please leave your comments or questions. This is actually Jim, so make sure you keep doing it here. So let's go here with another one with Dave McDonald. Did you ever mow anyone's gra anyone's lawn and donate the money to charity? My grass is pretty long at the moment. So we did add an offer, remember, for 500 bucks? Yeah, I did. No one took us up on the offer of 500 bucks. So, I don't know, David, I don't know, he's in Horsham, though. So it's a bit far, I guess, but... Yeah, well, I hope it's not the MCG they asked me to cut, that's sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> that might be a bit much even for 500 bucks. Well, the offer is there. <laughs> well, the offer is So James Meming's gone with the comment. I'm going to read this out. It's a bit off kilter. He goes, I don't want to be that guy, but like you're celebrating the 20th, that's Hitler's birthday. That's his comment there. I had no idea, and I'm sure they're not it is, in it line is, there. It is, it is. So Jim's a massive history buff. I'm sorry, I, I didn't know when I met Lee it was going to be the love of my life, so I just happened to meet her on Hitler's birthday. But Jim's so, has gone with a question there after that, which goes, what... Partly... Ca no, I, I'm not going to Well, keep going, we'll keep going. I wanted to acknowledge him because we're going to his page and he's done us a massive favour. So he goes with a nice question here. What kind of playable tokens will be available in Jim's Monopoly? Playable well, tokens, well, this is a great question. Like, like the dog? 
We're going to have something like a bucket for the cleaning. It has so to be a lawnmower. Different divisions. Yeah, a lawnmower. Yeah. And then we've got we've got um, trailers and vans. I think is the is the plan for the. Um, yes, it has to be custom done though, because they yes. generally traditionally do houses, so they want to do a custom. It has to be custom done. Yeah, it has to be custom yeah. done for that. Yeah, but some of them we can reuse. We just try and cover the. I think what are they going to use for um, pest control, like a spider or something like that? Yeah, I think they will. It's whatever we tell them, really. But yeah. um, they're definitely all custom done, so oh, it'll be pretty good. That's what I'd like to see. Um, I think it'd be fun. You could you could choose your division. And <laughs> yeah. So another question here from one of the li other live feeds, and Elliot Joseph's gone in forty years. What will people be nostalgic for? Which is a unique question. We've never had that one before. In forty years, what will people be nostalgic for? Hopefully not Jim's franchises, still kicking along. Well, I hope, I, I imagine we'll probably still be around. A brand like ours doesn't, it doesn't die. I mean, our archaic, old-fashioned computers, maybe, I suppose. That's true. They keep on improving. Jim's oh. AI, mate. Jim's AI running around, doing some stuff. Yeah, yeah. What do we do now? You know, back in the... Someone they can talk to on the phone, maybe. You know, the way customer service is going, you're... That, assume, that assumes technology is going to keep on... Advancing. ...marching ahead. Yeah. Um, we might be nostalgic for um, you know electricity and clean water because the whole place has been destroyed in some sort of holocaust. That's that's a possibility too. I, there I think, we go. <laughs> I'm sorry. Ever the, the world is a lot more <laughs> insecure than many people think. So. Ever, the, ever the optimist. All right, that's. Well, um, was, uh, personally, I'm very optimistic, but you've got to prepare for the, for the worst. Very, very true. So here we go from Jerry Cat. Jim, do you believe in a franchisee discounting services to attract customers or do you think it cheapens the brand and we should stand firm? Question no, mark. no, stand firm. I have never in my life given a discount to a customer for anything. Never. If it was something in church, you might go and mow somebody's in the church their lawns for them or something like that for free. But if it's business, it's business. And what you do is you earn good money in your business. We are, we are totally against the cut price. Discounts. You should never see that advertised for gyms. Mm. It's just, we are not cheap as chips. We are the quality service. Interesting thing about that, we make a point of charging more than the competition. We actually tell our franchises, we urge them. Quite often I actually tell my franchisees, if they've got plenty of work, I say, put your price up. You're not getting enough knockbacks in, in your surveys. Um, but the funny thing about it is we've got 28% of our leads run service. The demand for our services is so phenomenal because what people really want these days is great service. That's it, and that's why I use gyms. There's no, and there's, you've got the guarantee as well, so if something does yeah. happen, unfortunately, maybe, it very rarely does, but if it does, you've got that's some right. backing there. And if franchisees do get a, a, a bad rating, they, they actually can go back and, and, and fix up the job or even offer a freebie to the client. And if they do that and they make the client happy, then we'll take off the, the complaint. So we... We really push for brilliant service all the time. And I get personally involved. I, I, get, I deal with dozens of complaints every day. There we go. And yeah, it's actually very true for customers. If you are watching on the Aussie Ads YouTube's main page, Jim himself actually, hope you don't have a complaint, but if you ever did and it got escalated, he personally handles it himself. Mm. So let's keep going on here. Jeff Cook's gone, hi Jim, so g'day there. Paul Evans goes, Jesus is alive, God bless. So he must be a fellow, you're obviously a fellow church goer, Jim. Your religion's very important to you. Go on, you poor. I'm complete opposite. God bless you. I'm the complete opposite. Eric Jenkins yes, got. <laughs> Eric Jenkins. We did discussion. We did, we did a podcast with with this guy who's the interviewed by an atheist, which is the first time. That's true. Yeah. That's always good fun having an opposing view. Eric Jergens gone here. May I ask, what is wrong with the being with being a barista? Because Eric's mobile cafe, and he had a shot at baristas before. And could you please list three positive things about mobile cafe? As you seem to say a lot about your dislike of coffee. So Eric, Eric runs Jim's Mobile well, Cafe Eric, in you, Victoria. You, I don't, don't like coffee, and I think it's... Anyway, but your chocolate is really, really good. No, no, nothing wrong with being a barista, actually. What, what's, what's silly is going to spend four years at university and getting yourself a massive student debt to become a barista. That's true. That, that's my point. Now, if you want to go out and become a barista and learn the trade and open up a cafe of your own and then build it into a network of businesses across across Australia and the world, I think that's a great way of doing things. This is what Starbucks did, that guy did. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of hustle. Right. They, they all start the same way. They start small, like, like um, uh, Subway. You know, with, with the account of how they started off their first Subway and, and, and how that went and stuff. So I don't, I don't deny those things. My point is not so much that being a barista is a bad thing. It, the point is that doing an arts degree in particular is, is, is pretty useless. There's more people doing these kinds of degrees and yet then they could, they could have a real job and do so much better. Now, do you have anything positive to say about coffee itself? Have you tried coffee? Yeah, it's disgusting. I hate it. 
<laughs> so nothing positive to say, not for it, not one thing. No. no. I, have, I can't even say I've tried Eric's coffee because I wouldn't, don't drink coffee. But you've tried his um, iced chocolate, I think it was, or hot chocolate. Hot chocolate. Hot chocolate with cream on top. That's a very nice hot chocolate, actually. You almost eat too much of it because you'll get... You're like me, I reckon, a bit, bit chubby. Yeah, there we you'll, go. You'll grow, but uh, <laughs> it's very nice chocolate. Sorry, Eric, that's the best I can say. So Jim's memeing has gone, he should sell stubby holders. We actually should sell stubby holders, but um, Jim doesn't drink, so it's sort of a bit... Uh, but we could sell stubby holders for Jim's mowing, I reckon. Or Jim's, I do Jim's whatever. Drink I think, I alcohol. Drink, I drink wham. You drink wham? Hot water and milk. Like soy milk. <laughs> Hot water and soy I milk. I drink. How can you not drink? That's I meant drink alcohol. So the expression is drink. So drink alcohol. I know. Yeah. But, but you I drink, drink wham. wham. I drink wham. Wham. There we go. This wham, bam, better, thank you, this man. This is better than alcohol. <laughs> well, we have to disagree with you on that one. Not alcohol gives you cancer. What? Yeah, it does. Gee whiz, I must, well, I'm, I'm in a bit of trouble then. Any amount of alcohol is, is increased your risk of cancer. Moderate alcohol gives you some protection against heart attacks, but any amount of alcohol gives you, and if you have more than one, one or two standard drinks a day, it increases your risk of cancer tr tremendously. What about 20 on a weekend? So if you, maybe on the Saturday. So you don't have anything else for the six days, but 20 on the Saturday. You are, you are in for it. In for it. You are in for it. I might be in a bit of trouble. Unhealthy lifestyle. Oh no, I might be in a bit of trouble. Alcohol is a big risk factor. It, but it is responsible for a lot of people meeting in social situations and a lot of marriages happening and a lot of people meeting their partners. So there's a bit of a, there's I a lot of positives I, I met a wonderful girl, didn't need alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> she sometimes drinks a bit to, to try and put up with me, but that's about it. Oh, there, there, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. just, not not so she, she just gets really annoyed at me sometimes and she'll have a drink or two. <laughs> <laughs> so let's keep going here. So Tony Goodfellow's going, which uni is his ideas taught in? Is it the one he paid for? That's a good question. No, actually, um, Tony Goodfellow. There's there's a guy in Canada who 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 teaches in uh, New Brunswick, I think, and there's a somebody in South Korea who said they they really? using ideas. Yeah. Wow, that's pretty. That's pretty cool. Yeah. You got international as you with your ideas. Yeah, it's awesome. Well, it's, look, it's a minority viewpoint now, but there are people. When I talked to these guys in Israel, they had the book copy of the, the hardcover of by history, and it was really well worn. Yeah. And I sent them some more to give out, but they've got some. There are people interested in it, actually. It's getting around. Um, it still sells on Amazon. I keep on getting told that they've sold some more books on Amazon, so it's, it's, it's trickling out there. In fact, nice. if you look at, the, look at the reviews on Amazon for biohistory, it's, it's quite a few. It's picking up, isn't it? It's sort of yeah. getting a lot of steam. It's just, it just, just word of mouth, it just spreads around. And uh, if we can get some, some good scientific results out, I think it'll, it'll do a lot better. Yeah. Like, if we start producing stuff that's really effective and powerful, people are going to have to look at it and say, well, what's, what's going on here? There we go there. So let's keep going here. So Alex Wilson's gone, Hey Jim, how much is the Jim's Mowing franchise as I think I need to have one because I've been told I look like the Jim's Mowing logo. It's <laughs> a good, good problem to have. That's a good start. <laughs> You've got to change your name to Jim too, actually. That's, that's important. Jim Wilson right? sounds better than Alex. Jim, yeah, I, yeah. Think, I think. I reckon Jim Wilson's actually a really Jim good Definitely Jim Wilson. Name. Grow a good thick beard, wear the hat. There we go. You could get a discount. Bob's your uncle. We'll give you a discount, I reckon. We'll, we'll have to check with the franchise all in that area, but we might, we might be able to see something. I think with equipment, a, a, a Jim's mowing franchise probably sets you up about 30 grand or so. That's the full shebang, though. That's yeah, the full that's everything. that's everything. That's equipment, that's training, induction training, uniforms, equipment, the whole lot. And there we go here. And Eric Jurgen's gone, sad that you could only find one. We also do frappes, milkshakes, and we can do them with soy milk. Sorry, Eric, I just couldn't forget whilst we keep going there, mate. Sorry to disappoint you with that one. Let's keep going here. So Zach's gone, Jim, are you a suit or a tuxedo man? Question mark. It's a new one. <laughs> <laughs> I hate suits. I hate suits. I think one of my ambitions in business as far as having to become a millionaire without ever wearing a tie and I've managed it pretty well so far. But there's, there's, well, there's only one photo of you in a suit. My, I don't, yeah, they, did just, they just posed me and it was horrible. I hate that photo. You can tell because it's massive, that suit. It's full baggy. Oh, it's, it's awful. I hate it. I've, and I don't think I've ever in my life worn a tuxedo. I, no, I haven't seen a tuxedo. But that, most people wouldn't be wearing tuxedos now, I wouldn't think. I haven't seen many uh, cruising around. Suits, obviously, yes. Uh, but Jim I, hates them. No, nah, this, this is good enough. This is my... Uniform. There we go. Jim suits, wears that every suits, day. Suits are horrible. They are. What don't you like about them so much? Is it just what the stuffy or just the, wear a suit what it represents? Or? I think when I left school, I threw off that suit. That was a wonderful relief. I hated it. Yeah. There we go. So Dave McDonald's gone, degrees are normally not useful. I started a degree in marketing and found out many who completed their degree were unemployed or car sales people. Ended up selling fish and chips and learning electronics. So yes. there we go. I think the best education is School of Hard Knocks. I mean, if you want to be a... I don't know, a lawyer or a scientist or something, you've got to do it, or an accountant, 
but having more and more people educated doesn't make us doesn't make us any better, any smarter. That's for sure. That's true. I, I did a law degree, and I'm looking doing the Facebook Live with Jim every week. So it doesn't you never know what you're going to use or do. Yeah. So there we go. I, know, I, know, I never take any, any account of, of um, qualifications. I wouldn't have a clue um, what what qualifications my staff have. I just never look at it. Never look that far down. I look at what people have done. I may look at their hobbies and interests, which is interesting. If they're very active and volunteer and stuff, it's all good. But as to, as to the degree, I really couldn't care. Well, I found generally the more they have, the worse they are. Because they come in with a sense of almost entitlement or, I know. you know. We had a wonderful uh, guy, Brendan, who, who came to work for me when he was full-time, when he was 14 years, nine months. And That's it. And a brilliant programmer. Didn't even complete high school. And after he left us, which, you know, unfortunately we couldn't keep him forever, mm. he went out and did a master's or something like that. But he didn't need it. He was a great programmer. So there we are. So because that feeds into this next question from one of the other pages. Paul Burns has gone, if someone asked to be your apprentice and learn all that you know, what would you teach them? Oh, well, become a franchisee. <laughs> you can do. You, <laughs> you can kind of any time at all. If I was going to ask ask to be a, a consultant, I, I'll, I'll it's a thousand bucks an hour. It's a thousand or something bucks like that, yeah. an hour. But if you're a franchisee, you just got to contact me, ring me up, send me an email, and I'll tell you everything. And then you you do our training, and you and you read my books, and 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 what more can you need to know? I mean, I mean, the best thing in being a apprentice is you got you got to you got to do the job. And then you learn from somebody how to do it. So being a apprentice isn't isn't being taught for four years. Yeah, it's actually doing the job with somebody every now and then, saying, "Okay, do it this way, do it better." That's how you learn in in the in the old world the way to do it. And I think it's a pity, actually. I, I actually I think computer science it'd be far better if we started kids off when they're really young, like twelve, thirteen, programming, and then just learned on the job. And, 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 and we're taught by other people. If we could do that sort of thing, it'd be great. Just like, like Brendan. My, mm. my 10 year old's doing a, he's got a, a tutor, yeah, for, for programming, and he's, he's having great fun. He loves it. Actually, he's learning how to develop these games and stuff, which, which for him is, is wonderful. So there you go. It's a great comment or question there. So let's keep going on now here. So we've got people saying we should do stubby holders. We've got Jim's mowing stubby holders with fake grass. Yes, there are ones like that, and they're via Lod Workwear. So Lod does a lot of stuff for us. But it just be a matter of organising it and get it up on the shop, I guess, which we can do. If Jim approves it, we can do it. You can have some stubby holders. Michelle Hogan's gone, hi, Joel and Jim. I love these Facebook Lives. So much info and so informative. My husband and I are looking at pur purchasing a Jim's carpet cleaning. And from these Facebook sessions, I know exactly what to ask. Thank you so much. Yeah, that's great. That's the purpose yeah. of it, isn't it, I guess, to provide transparency. It absolutely is. I, I said the same thing I was to say to you, is that everybody else interested in a franchise, get hold of a list of franchisees and ring as many as possible, no matter what division you're interested in. Because mm. even within gyms, there are some franchisors and some divisions that are better than others. But you've you got to do your own, your own, your own homework. Most, most, most of our franchisees do pretty well, but we've had some... Some divisions and some franchises also haven't done quite as well. So you always, no matter what it is, don't just say it's gyms, it must be good. You, you do your own checking. And the good thing with carpet, carpet cleaning, uh, I would say, Michelle, is you can actually, there's a lot of material on them as well. Ali and Haydar and that, if you go to the Gyms Group YouTube channel, we've done full interviews with them. You can see actually the headquarters. We've done a Gyms Live out at the Gyms Cleaning Office, which is the cleaning group, which has all carpet cleaning, window pressure cleaning, all that sort of stuff as well. So if you actually want to see who you're going to be buying off, I'll go to the YouTube page as well, and just check out the interviews with Haydar and Ali and stuff like that, because it's a great division, that one there. That's really cool to say that, because the whole point of this was when um, the, the bad press about franchising was coming out, was to sort of do this to say, well, hang on, we're transparent, we're open, we're not hiding anything, and then anyone can come on. And we do have some tough questions sometimes from, from franchisees, especially regarding system or complaints especially. However, the point of this was to do that in an open forum so that we could get everyone asking Jim and just being transparent. There are some yeah. really shocking franchise systems around and there are also some probably more very good ones. you just got to do your homework. Well, I'm seeing it at the moment because we're doing a lot of Facebook ads for obviously for, fra for our franchisees in, in areas for certain divisions and a lot of the questions and comments is the same thing. Why pay fees? They rip you off. Why pay the money to this person? Blah, 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 blah. And they're not, they never refer to gyms. They're always referring to, I had a franchise 15 years ago. They took all my money and didn't the promises and blah, blah, blah. It's that sort of sentiment online. It's actually interesting how many franchisees we've got who were in a different franchise system. And I'm always very interested in that. So if, if, when, they, when I, I try and talk to as many franchisees as possible during training, prospects in training, and if they've been in another franchise system, what their experience was. And, and yeah. you know, not uncommonly, it has been pretty bad. But then, but then, but then they, they look at what 
what happened and what went wrong and then they look at the gym system and they say well it couldn't happen here because of the way we have things the fact that as a franchisee you can veto changes to the manual you can vote out your franchisor you're protected in the contract there's a whole lot of things that they really appreciate mm. so often people who've been in another franchise system had a bad experience they're actually very good recruits for us they are but it's just frustrating for me though michelle because i see the comments on other gyms and they just say the blanket things what i was saying mm. before they just take your fees all these promises and rip you off which is quite frustrating because this is why we do this content is because we say here's it all you can come and you can come and say that statement to jim and jim will address it we've had that a couple of times before and it's quite frustrating these other systems give franchising a bad name because obviously we have nearly four thousand for a reason and i hope the numbers itself talks to how good it is yes well <laughs> we certainly need more franchisees in some ways if there's coronavirus things <laughs> stuff the chinese economy we oh. might do quite well because we've got so much work <laughs> We'll keep going on. So Michelle's saying she's watched them all as well. So it's great to hear that you've watched That's them all, Michelle. That's the point of it. You have, when good, you come you to have train, very good taste. You do have very good taste in the content. You'll meet Jim as well when you come down to training. So yeah, you make sure you get a photo and have a chat to him yeah, as well. Come say hello. All right, let's keep going in here with another question on the live feed from over here. And we've got one here. And this is an interesting one. I want, to let, I want to talk to you this one. What are some fun and interesting alternatives to war that countries could settle their differences with? It's an extremely creative question from one of the other live feeds. <laughs> Well, Olympic Games is, is, is one way of doing it, I suppose, but whether you'd have to agree, you know, if I get more gold medals than you, you'll give me this country or whatever, I don't know. This it could be a lot of, territory. lot of drug cheating, especially even Russians. Russians will know in all the world when they afford the doping they do. Yes, well, that would be, would be an issue. That would be a massive issue. Or, or instead of invading someone, you could try and buy them, like, like Trump tried to do to uh, Greenland, which didn't impress anybody. <laughs> <laughs> he, got, he got very snotty at the, at the Danes for refusing to sell Greenland. What about a tug of war or something? Something simple. <laughs> Your three strongest blokes. Your three strongest getting, blokes. Getting everybody to agree. The ancient Greeks used to have a thing where they, had, instead of having a full-scale battle, they'd have, a, they'd have champions out and they'd go and, and fight each other. And... and so you have rather less bloodshed. Yeah, they'd represent the army, right? Their best, best champion against their best champion. Yeah, or, or, or a bunch of people, but, but limited numbers, so you wouldn't have so many deaths. Who would you be your best champion in gyms then, if you had to put one out? To do what? Uh, to maybe settle a score if you needed to happen. Maybe Archie, with his former... I think I think Jim's hitman would be the would <laughs> Jim's be. hitman. We did have that sh that shirt a while ago. Mm. We'll keep going. So Eric Jergens going. How profitable is Jim's Plus, and when does the new system go live? No, it's not profitable at all. It's still it's still growing. We've still only got fifteen percent of hundred service leads being looked after by Jim's Plus, but we're hitting records just about every week. So but it does increase every week. That's growing, the point, right? It's growing fast. Yeah. It'll certainly be profitable in this year sometime for sure. Absolutely. So we've got one one question here as well. If you were transported. 400 years into the past with no clothes or anything else. How would you prove that you were from the future? Zach Fraser. Very, very creative question. <laughs> it's an interesting one. Actually, if you are 400 years in the past in Australia, you'd be in big trouble because naked amongst the Aboriginals wouldn't do so good. So if you were in, in, in um, say, 1600... Let's say England or something, maybe. How could you prove? I don't, you could prove nobody would believe you. What you, what you probably possibly would have, or at least in my case, is some knowledge of what was going to happen. So you go back to, say, uh, 1620 mm -hmm. in, in England. Well, um, I'd probably try to get to America. Right. Because I'd know quite well this is the time when the English settlements just there started. Like people who went across there did much, much better at a much higher, a lower death rate. But... Um, I don't know, you have to try and develop some sort of technology. Mm. No, nothing to do with computers, obviously. I don't even know what you... I don't it's think you, you couldn't question. Prove, nobody would believe you. That's true. Nobody would, nobody would believe you if you can't, said you come from the future. Very, very true. Unless I could take a mobile phone back with me. An Apple phone, right? Just whip it out. That, that would be pretty impressive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because I couldn't ring anybody, but still... It'd be that's, very, that's very true. And you couldn't charge it either, so after a while it'd just be a brick, so I don't have to impress anybody. <laughs> just be a paper weight in the end or something like that. If you could choose what you take back, that would be, that would be very interesting. A, um, I reckon a, a, a take back a steam engine or something of that nature would, okay. would be very... If you, could, if, you could, if you could choose what you would take back, it's like the old Back to the Future, isn't it? When they went back to the West, right? The Midwest in America? Yes, yes. Um, interesting thing is we were supposed to have... Um, I, think, I think that film badly let us down that we were supposed to have fusion power by now. <laughs> so I don't see it. So let's keep going. Jim's Mamie's gone. Any plans to buy it VIP? Oh, I actually made him an offer. Made him an offer? I did. 
When was this? We just spoke to Bill. Well, gee whiz, here we go. Breaking news. That's why you got to watch um, Archie Movie Week. He, he said no. So he said right. no. So there we go. <laughs> he said no. So that's breaking news on Archie Gym right there. Thanks to Jim's Mimi. Dave McDonald's gone. What is this star rating for Jim's Plus? Average star rating. Uh, we got it to 4.3 at one stage. So far, last, last month it was 4.3, which is the best we've ever done. This year, this month so far, we had a 4.16, which is very disappointing. It's the, it's the two figures that I care about. The, the turnover and the star rating. Yeah. The Jim's, Jim's guy starting is about 4.6. So what I'd like to do is to, by, by, by weaning out the poor operators, I would like to get Jim's Plus to get the same star ratings. That means the customers come to us, they get the same quality of um, service. So, but on average, Jim's guy's a lot higher. Oh, of course, yeah. Absolutely. So let's keep going. Is Zach's gone? What car do you drive, Jim? Uh, Mitsubishi. I think it's called Statesman. It's about 10 years old. It's a Statesman, okay. Mitsubishi Statesman. It's, it's, a, it's an a, older car. A seven, a seven seater. Seven seater car. There you go. You see Jim driving his kids to school quite often. If you watch the um, yeah. Day in the Life of Jim on YouTube, that's right. Eric Jones suggested just draw a wheel or other things that have not been invented yet. Well, the wheel would have been invented four hundred years ago. Oh yeah, absolutely. So then Janine's gone. Here, Jim, do you remember your very first customer? Yes, Mr. Tapley when I was eight. Mr. Tapley when you're eight. He used to pay me two shillings to to rake his driveway when I was eight years old. There you go, Mr. Tapley, two we, shillings. I, I knocked on his door doing Bob's job for Cub Scouts, raise money. And, uh, and he gave me, he said, do you, want, do you want to come and have a job for two shillings per week? Which was a lot. You could buy a nice big block of chocolate in those days. Not too bad at all. Are you, you surely would have bought the bottom of box, box of uh, chocolate, a block of chocolate, knowing you. I love chocolate. Always have. Absolutely. Did. All right, so let's go. Let's give these books away, guys. So there's lots of good questions tonight. Is there anything that instantly off your top of your head that you like? So I've read, I've read a few down here. Jeez, there's some really good ones there. There's some heaps of rippers. It was really good and different. I love the, I love the one about going back 400 years. That really stopped me a bit. How are you talking right. about that? I think that's a great question. So 400 years, you've got a signed book. No problem. I like the Ben Linderman one at the start. So Ben asked a heap of obscure questions about tomato sauce in the fridge or the cupboard, but he asked about your favourite movie, which I like because I haven't heard... I don't know if I've heard Dances with Wolves before. So we're going to give you one there, Ben, as well. So we like Ben. And we're going to give one more as well. Could have brought a couple down here as well. I won't give it to Janine because Janine's coming to the training, so she'll get one of these. Um, there was some funny stuff there. What about Zach? Zach's asked heaps tonight. So Zach's from Instagram, a younger fella there. He's asked everything about pineapple and all that sort of stuff on pizzas. So Jim's going to get... Uh, Zach, I just hope you listen to my advice. You did not put pineapple on a pizza. That is, that is not that is not good. Well, we do change to the system for Jim's, but we're going to change to the foothills now. No, no pineapple on pizzas, right? When they get served there. No, nah, it's not happening. Well, um, customers are customers. They want pineapple and that pineapple. <laughs> Well, we're I, say I, highly recommend I just it. think it's an abomination. <laughs> so all I'll do is leave it there, guys. So a massive thanks to Jim's Memeing and Aussie Az for allowing us to share this into their live stream. If you are watching on those pages next week, Jim's group Facebook page of the various pages. Jim does this every Wednesday night, which is great. And we, he answers everything. So we asked anything tonight. So if you're thinking I should have asked him, yeah, this, do me it. a bit on some of those questions. But I, oh, there's some rippers. Jim was, you're normally pretty on them with them, but well, sometimes you've got to think about it. Today, he actually had a great thing. So that was awesome this week. So we'll see you next week, guys, at Wednesday at 7 o'clock. Jim's has heaps of content on podcasts, YouTube, everything like that. So if you want to get enough of your gym fix, go online and check him out. There's lots of stuff there. And if you are thinking about buying a franchise, 131546. Are we giving everybody the hat? Oh, we are from Instagram, but that's a different thing. So anyone who said they're from Instagram on the live feed, I'm going to DM you personally after this, and I'm going to give it to you. So yes, you are going to get a gym right, worn hat. You're going to have this hat. Absolutely. So the gym worn bucket hat. So it's got Jim's DNA in there. So if you want to do the Sheldon Cooper and replicate yourself a gym, you can yourself. <laughs> so there we go. So I think one of me's enough. <laughs> I'm sure some people will agree, but we're more gym the better. All right, let's keep going. So we'll leave it there this week, guys. So thank you very much for watching and tuning in. And thanks to those pages for allowing us to share as well. See you next week at 7 o'clock. Okay.